Hi guys, my name is Mark Law, creator of Rational Wine, Consult Wine, and Seven Key Wine Concepts. In this video, I'll be talking about structure in wine. In the previous video, I focused on aroma and flavor because when you're handed a glass of wine, these are the first things you pay attention to. And sometimes when the wine's perfect, this becomes the only thing you pay attention to. Imagine you're sitting in a room and the temperature is perfect. You're reading a book, you're having a meal, or having a conversation with a friend. The last thing you're thinking about is, ah, the temperature is perfect in this room. It's not until it becomes too hot or cold or humid or dry that you put up your hand and you say, something doesn't feel right. It's the same thing with wine. The aroma might be great, the flavor might be beautiful, but something is sticking out, it's not right, and you don't know exactly how to say it. Often this happens to be related to the wine's structure. There is a lot happening underneath that aroma and flavor, most of us don't think about it because we haven't been trained to think about it. So in this video, I'll be focusing on five structural components, sugar, acid, tannin, alcohol, and body. To expand on these, I'll introduce a few new technical concepts, but I'll try to keep things as simple as possible. Once again, a lot of this is based on the WSET's systematic approach to tasting, with a bit of influence from the court of Master Sommelier's approach to deductive tasting. I'll put some links down in the description. Please click through, have a look, and have some fun. Let's get started. Once you smell and taste a wine, the next thing you'll notice is its sweetness, or more often than not, its lack of sweetness. Because the fact is, maybe 85-95% to 95 of wines you'll come across are going to be not tasting sweet at all. When a wine's not sweet, we refer to it as dry. And then it's not just a matter of sweet and not sweet, we have a sliding scale. There's dry, off dry, medium dry, medium sweet, sweet and luscious. Let's have a look at the extremes of the spectrum first. Dry wines will make up about 85-90% to 90 of wines you come across, which means there'll be no discernible sugar sweetness. But there is a misconception that often happens with dry wines, and it's basically a confusion between sweetness and ripeness. So let me explain. Sometimes I hand someone a glass of wine, they smell it, they taste it, and they tell me they think the wine is sweet. But when I taste it, there's no sweetness at all. What's going on? Basically, the types of fruit that they're getting it feels a bit more juicy and ripe. Uh, in the previous video, I explained in white wines, for example, you've got citrus, tree, stone, and tropical fruits. Maybe the white wine was showing much more of those stone and tropical fruits, like juicy apricot, nectarine, uh, ripe pineapple and mango, and uh, even though the wine didn't taste uh, sugary sweet at all, uh, it came across as very ripe, and that gets misattributed to sweetness. This happens with red wines as well. Sometimes the wine is uh, quite ripe, very much uh, ripe blackberries, very jammy figs and dates and prunes, and uh, this once again gets misattributed to sweetness, even though the wine doesn't taste sugar sweet at all. So this is an important uh, distinction to keep in mind. You're most likely thinking of ripeness, give the wine a second chance, have another taste and uh, see how you go. On the other end of the scale, you have your sweet and luscious wines. Uh, usually it's quite easy to find because if you walk into a wine shop, there will be a section dedicated to dessert wines, uh, or if you look at a restaurant's wine list, there will be a section dedicated to dessert wines once again. And there are a lot of ways a winemaker can make sure there's enough sugar in the wine. Uh, way back in the first video, I spoke about vinification. The first step was to decide on the timing on when you want to harvest the grapes. Because the longer you wait, the more time the grape has to accumulate more sugar, it becomes more ripe. And uh, at the very extreme, they can even wait for the grapes to dry on the vines, they'll become like raisins. Uh, but this does come with risks because the longer you wait, the weather might change, it might rain, and there's the risk of rot. And uh, even uh, birds uh, coming in to eat your grapes as well, and that's going to reduce the amount of material you can uh, harvest. And uh, I mentioned uh, different terms that uh, might be used on the label of the bottle. You've got late harvest, uh, vendange tardive in French, and spätleser in German. 
And uh, another way is during the fermentation process, you can interrupt the fermentation. Uh, once again, fermentation is where yeast consumes the sugar in the grape juice and turns it into alcohol. You can interrupt it by bringing down the temperature so it's too cold for the yeast to function, or you can add sulfur dioxide, which actually kills the yeast. And uh, depending on when you apply those processes, that will determine how much sugar is left in the wine. And uh, that contributes to the sliding scale because it's not just uh, no sweetness and a lot of sweetness. You've got anything from off dry, medium dry, medium sweet, sweet, luscious. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to tell where on a sweetness scale a wine might fit. Uh, I might make a video later on focusing on sweet wines, but in the meantime, take a moment to read the back label of the bottle, ask the sommelier or the wine shop owner, even take a few risks. There is a time and place for sweet wines, and it would just be a shame if you were to dismiss it because you're afraid of uh, getting something you're not sure of. Just grab some cheese, some chocolate or some ice cream and have some fun. Acid is the next structural component, very important. Often it's the acidity in the wine that gives wine a sense of balance. A classic non-wine example is uh, a can of soft drink, uh, might be cola or lemonade. Those things have a disgusting amount of sugar in them, but the reason they're not sticky or cloying is because it's balanced by a lot of acid. I did a quick search online and uh, the average soft drink has over 100 grams per liter of sugar. So imagine how much acid they have to add to that to balance things out. For comparison, your typical dry wine can get up to seven or eight grams per liter before you can taste uh, sugar sweetness. That seems to be the typical threshold for most people. And the way you can measure acid is with saliva. Once you smell a wine, you taste it, lift up your tongue in the middle of your mouth so it's not touching any part of it. Generally, the higher the acidity, the more saliva your mouth will produce. This is because it's used to neutralize the acid in your mouth to keep it clean. If the wine is lower acid, then your mouth is going to produce a lot less saliva. Uh, try it with a glass of water, have a sip, uh, drink it, then try a tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar and you're going to notice the difference. Uh, the scale we use to uh, measure acidity, uh, simply low, medium and high. We try to add minus and plus as well to split the difference in case you have two different wines which are quite similar. Uh, please note that acid is not used to refer to sourness. If you do taste sour flavors in the wine, think back to the nature of the fruit. Instead of saying sour fruits, uh, try to match it with something specific. Is it the sourness of a lemon or a lime? Is it more like green apple, underripe peach, green pineapple or green mango? Uh, is it a wild strawberry or a wild cherry? This is going to be more helpful for you later on. Now let's talk about tannin. Typically, we only talk about tannin in red wines. It's what gives red wine its color. It also gives red wine a sense of texture. You can recognize tannin by a drying sensation it gives you once you swallow the wine. Uh, another way you might have come across tannin before is if you leave your tea steeped for too long and you taste it, that's also very drying. Uh, with some wines, this drying effect happens all over in the mouth. With other wines, it can be quite specific, maybe in the corners of your teeth and the gums. And uh, this can be a clue sometimes if you're having a blind tasting, so uh, pay attention to that. Uh, notice that tannin stands in direct contrast with acid. Acid makes your mouth moist with saliva, but tannin dries your mouth. This is because the tannin uh, binds with the proteins in your saliva. And winemakers will therefore need to find a balance between acid and tannin to make their wines more appealing. You can apply the same scale, low, medium, high. You've got medium minus and medium plus, so very simple there. You will find wines that are lightly tannic and then you'll find wines that are very powerfully tannic. Uh, tannin can also be characterized by its nature. I spoke about nature in regards to wine aromas and flavors. You can apply the same thought process to tannins as well. Wine tannins can be unripe, ripe or super ripe. Uh, they can be further narrowed down by the texture. So use your imagination to guide you. Have a taste of the wine. 
Uh, some terms I've often heard are uh, green tannins. You can have sandy tannins, chalky tannins, chunky tannins, chocolatey tannins, velvety tannins, silky tannins. Just from hearing those words, you can almost imagine running a silk sheet over your face or dark chocolate melting in your mouth or accidentally having sand blown in your face. So this is just another way to characterize what you're sensing in the wine. Uh, you might come across the odd white wine where it's appropriate to talk about tannin because the winemaker might have chosen to use skins or stems there. Uh, often these are placed in a separate category of orange wines. And uh, spare a thought for rosé wines as well, because these pink and blush wines often they go colour because they've spent just a little bit of time on the skins and the grapes. Let's talk about alcohol. Uh, we don't acknowledge it often, but this is probably the main reason we drink wine at all. If you didn't get a buzz from it, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. But as always, the main thing is balance. Uh, alcohol is important because it's more volatile than water, meaning it goes from being a liquid to a gas or vapor much more easily. This alcohol vapor carries those chemicals in the wine along for a ride. It goes through the nose into the brain and that gets interpreted as aroma and flavor. Once you sip and swallow the wine, this alcohol can be sensed by a feeling of heat in the mouth. In my experience, everyone senses alcohol differently. Some feel it on the tongue, some feel it in the roof of the mouth, others feel it after they swallow it in the back of the throat. So pay attention to where you feel this alcoholic heat and that's going to help you later on. Sometimes if the wine is very high alcohol, you might even start crying. Uh, there might be some tears coming out, so use that as an indication as well. Uh, again, you can use the low, medium, high scale, medium, minus, medium, plus, and um, yeah, very simple. Uh, as a reference, most still wines you'll come across, they'll be between 8% and 15% alcohol. So use that to calibrate your low and high markers. And uh, you can find the alcohol percentage printed on bottles of wine because that's a legal requirement in most countries. Make a game out of it. Taste the wine, see if you can narrow down the alcohol to half a percent, and that's going to let you know if you're calibrating your palate properly. The final structural component is the wine's body. Uh, the easiest way to think of it is uh, how heavy it feels on the palate. Imagine you have a tablespoon of water, now try tasting a tablespoon of honey. Of course the honey is going to feel more viscous, it's more thick, it's more weighty than the water. And uh, you can place it on a scale of light, medium and full bodied and plus and minus once again. So same scale, just a slight difference in wording. Uh, the other four components though, they can contribute to the wine's sense of body. So if you have a wine that's got a lot of tannin or a lot of alcohol, that can give the wine a sense that it's got a full body there. But uh, I think it's more important to take it as a whole package evaluation rather than letting any of the other components uh, influence your decision of how full-bodied the wine is. Uh, also important to note that uh, just because the wine is full-bodied doesn't mean it's uh, better quality. You can have beautiful light-bodied wines which are outstanding and uh, this can be another misconception as well. A lot of people they value full-bodied wines uh, over light-bodied wines because they just leave a stronger impression. So make sure you're not biasing yourself and give lighter bodied wines a chance. Uh, body is just another structural component in the wine, that's all. That's all I want to talk about in this video, so just a quick recap. The five structural components of a wine are sugar, acid, tannin, alcohol, and body. Sugar, of course, is uh, sensed by its sweetness, and that can be anything from dry to off dry, medium dry, medium sweet, sweet and luscious. And then you have acid, measured by saliva, tannin, measured by the dryness in your mouth, alcohol, sensed by heat, and body, which is uh, how heavy the wine feels in your mouth and they all fit on a similar scale, low, medium and high, medium minus and medium plus if you want to get more specific. Uh, with the body of course you can go light bodied and full bodied, just a slight change in uh, words, very simple. 
And uh, in the next video, I plan to talk about the quality uh, components in the wine, which includes things like balance, length, intensity, and complexity. We are going to bring together everything we spoke about in the previous videos, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I can answer you there, or you can send me a direct message or an email. Cheers, see you again soon.